Hello guys, welcome back to the DNN Medical Series. In today's video, we'll be looking on a coagulation cascade. Now, if you've ever researched a coagulation cascade, it looks like a really complicated process, but today we're going to break it down and make it simple. So when you have any tissue damage or trauma, there's a need for making a clot. So the clot is necessary for stabilizing the injury, okay? So there are two processes, the in vivo, which means inside your body. So we're going to look on the coagulation cascade inside your body versus in vitro, which means outside your body. So there are slight differences in terms of the factors which are activated as well as the process, but we're going to get into that soon. All right, so stay tuned. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to start with the in vitro pathway and remember in vitro means outside of the body. Now the in vitro pathway consists of three different pathways. Intrinsic, usually when there is damaged surface, or extrinsic for um, tissue damage or trauma, and then common pathway, which is where the two different pathways meet. Now to note also, the intrinsic pathway affects PTT time right and extrinsic pathway affects the pt time so pt and ptt are just coagulation tests to ensure that the coagulation is occurring in a stepwise process yeah so the pt and ptt pathway are recorded in seconds and it tells um which pathway has been affected and probably what factor is deficient all right so for the intrinsic pathway we start with all right, so for the intrinsic pathway, it starts with factor 12. So we're not going to use the Roman numeral, even though that's what is used, so not to confuse you, all right? So 12 is activated to 12A by calcium. All of the factors are activated from like 12 to 12A or 11 to 11A, etc. by calcium. So 12 now activates 11, which activates 9, which activates 8. As you can see, it's like a countdown, but we're skipping 10. All right, so 12 again activates 11, which activates 9 and activates 8. So factor 8 and 9 are involved in hemophilia. So if there is a deficiency in factor 8, you will have hemophilia A. Or if there is a deficiency in factor 9, then that will lead to hemophilia B or what we call Christmas disease. All right, so... That's the first part or the intrinsic pathway. So in the extrinsic pathway now, it just has factor seven, all right? And tissue factor, all right? So it'd be seven get activated to seven A and then tissue factor gets activated, right? Usually in trauma cases. And now we're going to go to the common pathway, all right? So in the common pathway, we have factors 10, five, and two all right factors 10 5 and 2 all right so what happens is that once the intrinsic and the extrinsic pathway is finished it activates factor 10 and factor 10 goes to 10a and factor 10 also activates 5 which goes to 5a and both factor 10 and 5 activates factor 2 right which is prothrombin right and it converts it to thrombin and then now this thrombin comes and activate factor one which is which is sorry fibrinogen right and it converts it to 1a which is fibrin and what happens is now the fibrin comes and activate factor 13 to 13a and then you form cross linkages which gives you your fibrin clot so again 12 activates 11 which activates 9 which activates 8 so it's like you're counting down but we're skipping 10 in the extrinsic it's easy to remember because it's just factor 7 and tissue factor then they go to the common pathway which um, involves the activation of 10 and 5 all right, and 10 and 5 activates prothrombin, which is factor 2, to thrombin, which is 2A. And then thrombin now activates factor 1. So it's like you're going down. 
fibrinogen to form fibrin 1A. And then fibrin now activates factor 13, which helps to cross-link and form your fibrin clot. So this is essentially all right now we're going to focus on the in vivo pathway and remember in vivo means inside the body so there are slight differences with this pathway all right so what occurs is that remember there's seven seven factors converted to 7a remember all of this is through calcium right and then 7a activates your tissue factor and from the in vitro pathway we can remember that the tissue factor goes to the common pathway right and this activates um 10 right in that pathway however in the in vivo pathway the tissue factor can activate factor 10 or factor 9 if it activates 9 this is the major pathway of the in vivo um, coagulation cascade and if it activates the 10 this is the minor pathway all right, so let's focus our attention on the minor pathway. Remember, for the minor pathway, it is factor 10 that is being activated. So what occurs is that factor 10, remember from the in vitro, will activate what? Yes, I am hearing you. Prothrombin, right, which will activate, sorry, not prothrombin, prothrombin, which will activate thrombin. Right, so now in the minor part where the thrombin comes to activate factor 5, factor 8, factor 11, and factor 13. Remember, factor 13 is needed to form the fibrin clot in the final stages. So, how I try to remember what thrombin activates, I say you go up by 3. So, you start with 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 3 plus 8 is 11, and you always need factor 13 to finish off. All right, and this pathway is inactivated by your tissue factor. So more tissue factor produced um, inhibits or stops this minor um, pathway. All right, so now we're going to continue with the major pathway. Remember we said that the major pathway is when 7A activates tissue factor, which activates factor 9 instead of factor 10, which is the minor pathway. So when the 9 gets activated, remember it be 9A, um, remember the 8A is already activated by thrombin in the minor pathway. These two activates 10A and 5A gets activated also. Now 10A, if you can remember from the in vitro, and 5A come together to activate prothrombin. All right, and prothrombin gets activated to thrombin. And remember, thrombin causes fibrinogen to convert to fibrin. And then this activates factor 13, um, which forms the fibrin clot. So the last stage, which is this part, is quite similar to the ending of the in vitro pathway. So 10A and 5A activates prothrombin to thrombin, then fibrinogen to fibrin, and then 13 factor 13 gets activated right so the only difference is that it's 7 that is activating 9 and then 8 and 9 activating 10 and 5 all right so to note though in the in vivo pathway you notice we haven't seen one particular factor so as in the in vitro pathway remember 12 was activating 11 which was activating 9 which was activating 8 in the intrinsic pathway in the in vivo there is no factor 12 all right so no factor 12 needed in the in vivo pathway so a patient could have a problem with their factor 12 but their coagulation is normal it will not be shown until you do the in vitro pathway because factor 12 is needed that you realize that there is a problem with coagulation all right, so these are some things to consider. I hope this video made it more simple for you. All right, so that's it for this video. See you in the next one. Goodbye.